As humans, we've all been conditioned to view three-dimensional space as absolute, time as a single linear progression, and our experiences as reality itself. Such conditioning obviously serves a purpose in day-to-day -day life, but when one seeks to understand the true nature of reality and our place within it, these assumptions become obstacles. This is why modern scientists have had such a difficult time combining quantum physics and general relativity into a unified theory. They actually already have the facts needed to connect the dots, but connecting those dots requires a paradigm shift that many are uncomfortable with. The confusion begins with the way that most people think of quanta. If you ask the average college student what an electron is, they will probably tell you that it is a particle, which evokes an image of a tiny object floating in space. This is a misconception. Quanta are not objects. Quanta have what scientists call a wave-particle duality, meaning that they can behave as either a particle or a wave depending on how we interact with them. The terms wave and particle, however, are deceptive. A more accurate way of conceptualizing quanta would be to think of their wave state as a field of probability, which can be recorded as an interference pattern, and their particle state as probability collapsed into a single point of interaction. For more on this, look up the double slit experiment. Now, even those who are aware of the bizarre properties of quanta, such as their wave-particle duality, quantum teleportation, quantum superpositioning, and quantum entanglement, still tend to conceptualize this phenomenon within a mental framework based on space and time. Again, this is just conditioning. Quanta do not exist within space and time. They do not occupy three-dimensional positions. In fact, time and space are actually created by the interactions of quanta, specifically quantum entanglement. This phenomenon is described in the Wheeler-DeWitt equation and has been confirmed experimentally. Interestingly, general relativity theorists and cosmologists are thrown off by the same underlying assumptions. They acknowledge that the origin of the universe, the singularity, is a timeless, spaceless state, but most don't fully recognize the implications. For example, you can't say that the singularity existed before the Big Bang. That's putting the timeless inside of time. If something is timeless, it has no temporal relationships. It cannot be before or after anything. Now, general relativity tells us that time and space are one fabric. This is not merely theoretical. GPS satellites have to account for distortions in time caused by their speed, otherwise their readings would drift by several miles. Since time and space are one fabric, without space, you cannot have time. And without time, you cannot have space. If you connect the dots here, quanta actually share several key characteristics with the singularity. They are both timeless and spaceless energy. Now, if quanta and the singularity are both timeless and spaceless, then they cannot be separate. Separation can only exist within a time-space continuum. If quanta and the singularity are not separate, then they are actually one. And here we arrive at the crux of the matter. The singularity didn't cease to exist in an explosion billions of years ago. Quanta are the singularity interacting with itself. Everything is one, literally. This is quantum relativity. Now, some of the more advanced among you might ask, but what about gravity? Well, general relativity tells us that gravity is a geometric property of space and time. And again, experimental evidence shows that space and time are byproducts of quantum entanglement. Scientists have recently discovered that certain geometric models can be used to dramatically simplify calculations of quantum interactions and quantum entanglement. So it is not a massive leap to consider that the geometry that creates gravity is actually a characteristic of quantum probability fields. In fact, some researchers are actively exploring this very possibility. So how does all of this relate to us in this human experience we're having? We still have to deal with the real world with its time clocks, bills, wars, and petty tyrants, right? Well, this rabbit hole actually goes much, much deeper. But if you want to take something home from this level, start here. The rules of the game are not nearly as rigid as we've been led to believe. If you start with our quantum nature as your point of reference, everything changes. The very idea that we owe obedience to these pitiful phantoms we call government, or that we are bound to keep spinning these bizarre hamster wheels that we've built for ourselves, becomes laughable. It doesn't have to be this way. Choose something different. Find that millimeter of free will within and expand it. As you do, you'll start to realize that reality is a creative process, not a mechanical linear progression. You are the quantum singularity interacting with itself. The more we wake up to that, the wider the possibilities come.
this message resonates with you, spread it. If you want more, subscribe to Storm Clouds Gathering on YouTube or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. If you have a topic request, post it in the comments. And for the full transcript and sources, visit our website, stormcloudsgathering.com.